No matter what kind of car you buy today, you'll want to keep it carefully maintained. And that's when you find out there's more to a car dealer than the kind of deal he offers you. It's the kind of service he offers you after the sale. It's how much he cares about your car's well-being while you own it. And a good sign of a dealer who cares is one who stocks Pennzoil. That shows he wants to offer you maximum engine protection so that you'll have a minimum of repairs and fewer driving problems. Because he knows that Pennzoil not only meets but exceeds new car manufacturers' requirements. And that Pennzoil is made only from 100% pure Pennsylvania grade crude oil. With Pennzoil's additives E7 already blended in. So it'll stand up under the toughest driving conditions. The chances are a dealer who offers you this kind of a quality product is a good man to do business with. Because he knows when your car is worth caring for, Pennzoil is worth asking for. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Come in. What's that? Yes, it is rather dark in here. You see, we never turn on the lights. We don't need any. At the Radio Mystery Theater, all we illuminate is your imagination. We fill it full of ghostly radiations, mysterious emanations, the eerie glow of terrifying images. And now we have a most unusual image for you. The image of a doll. Yes, I said doll. And a very pretty one, too. Long, silky blonde hair. Innocent, round, blue eyes. The charming dress of taffeta and lace. This is the central character of the story you're about to hear. Of course, you're asking, what makes a doll an image of fear and horror? You've got to find it, Jimmy. You've got to get that doll away from him. Okay, honey, okay. Give us a little time. I don't have any time. If something happens to that doll... I'll die. Our mystery drama, The Doll, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Joanne Linville and Ross Martin. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. When you drink beer, do you tilt the glass for long, hearty swallows? Or just tip it and sip it? Well, sipping's the thing for wine. But Budweiser beer is a hearty drink, brewed for zest and character. The best way to enjoy Bud is to drink it. Not chug a lug, just man-sized beer drinker swallows. That's when that famous Budweiser taste, smoothness, and drinkability really come through. Smoothness and drinkability that come only from natural carbonation and exclusive beechwood aging. Smoothness and drinkability, too good for any half-hearted sipping. So drink up. You'll see that brewing beer right does make a difference. And that when you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Regularly $399.95, now only $344. You save $55.95 if you act fast while they last. Sylvania's Cowboy Special is a handsome, deluxe, 19-inch color portable. Regularly $399.95, but for a limited time, only $344. You save $55.95. As prices rise on other models, this Sylvania price has come down dramatically. You'll find this Sylvania Portable perfect for colorful viewing of the Cowboys and other exciting TV shows. It's 95% solid state, uses Sylvania's superb 19-inch color bright picture tube, and features the easy-to-use Permalock anti-goof color tuning system. The Sylvania Cowboy Special, at the amazing low price of only $344, is not a stripped price leader. It has many deluxe features like lighted channel indicators, built-in antennas and handle, handsome walnut grain finish, and a powerful 25,000-volt chassis. Only $344 while they last. See it now at your nearest Sylvania dealer. See Sight and Sound, 1035 15th Street, Plano.
story begins in the classroom of a small co-educational university. Not a very unusual setting. But today, these young men and women are hearing an unusual lecture. The guest speaker is Professor Eric Douglas. And the subject of his address is written in chalk on the blackboard. Let's step a little closer and see what it says. Homeopathic magic. Ancient and modern. Let's be quiet and listen. For thousands of years, people believed they could injure or destroy their enemy by injuring or destroying an image of it. And so they made likenesses in cloth and wood in clay. The ancient Egyptians used wax. The wizards would take a drop of a man's blood, clippings from his hair or parings of his nails, and knead them into a wax figure. You mean like a voodoo doll, Professor? Uh, Voodoo belongs to the modern era, but the idea is exactly the same. Once the doll was made in this fashion, the victim was at the mercy of the sorcerer. So, you see, the doll is really man's oldest toy and perhaps his deadliest. You mean that stuff really works? Well, that is the strangest part of all. Sometimes it works very well. You got to be kidding, Professor. Young lady, I wonder if you'd like to help me with a little experiment. Me, Professor? Yes. Will you come up front, please? Now, uh, just for the uh, the fun of it, uh, shall we uh, shall we make a doll? Huh? All right. Now let's see. What shall we use? Um, yeah, now this little towel will do fine. I'll just tie a knot to make the head. Uh, yeah. And now let's dress it up a little. Can you help me? How? Well, with some part of you. A um, a hair from your head, perhaps. Uh, now, uh, how about uh, something you own? Uh, that ring, maybe. May I borrow that? Well, I... uh, well, yeah, thank you. Now, we'll put that around the neck. Voila. We have an instant voodoo doll. Fascinating, isn't it? To know that the doll is meant to be a representation of you? Now, look at it. I'm looking. Yeah, well, keep looking. Now, don't take your eyes off of it. You can almost see your face in the cloth, can't you? It's almost as if the doll is you. Whatever happens to the doll happens to you. You. The doll. You. The doll. Sharing one body between you. One life. One destiny. I... I still think it's silly. All right. And let's see what happens when I take this letter knife. What are you going to do? Nothing. I'm merely going to plunge this knife into a meaningless piece of cloth. No, don't! Prudence? 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 Professor? Yes. I uh, want to know what you think of this record. Fred Cartwright sent it to me. Claims it's an authentic Dumbala ritual march. I could not say, Professor. Hmm. I think it was probably recorded on Hollywood Boulevard. Well, that's enough of that. Well, what's become of Laura? Isn't she home yet? She's just arrived, sir. She's in the living room. Oh. Laura, darling... I didn't hear the door. You're very late. Oh, I'm sorry, Eric. I, uh... The match wasn't over until six. It went five, six. And, uh, who won? You know you don't care the first thing about tennis. Ah, uh, that's a young man's game. Not for old birds like me. Oh, come on, stop that. You're far from old. Oh, Prudence, I hope I didn't spoil your dinner. It's all right, Miss Fletcher. I'll go see to it now. Eric, why won't she ever call me Laura? Oh, it's just her way. You know how it is in the islands. A servant's place is a servant's place. Tradition. Mm, it's more than that. It's resentment. You've got your father's sensitivity. Harry was always thinking that people resented him. Maybe he had good reason. He wasn't very popular among his colleagues. Your father was a renegade. That's why... 
One thing to investigate primitive cultures, that's an anthropologist's job. But to spend your life among them, to raise your child among them... No, I never complain. <laughs> well, you managed to turn out pretty happily. But you're uh, still half-savage, of course. Am I? You can't fool me, Laura. You're still a child of voodoo, just like Prudence. No, don't be silly, Eric. I know you all right. When the full moon rises and the drums start to beat in the jungle and the serpent god Dumbala raises his hooded head... Eric, stop it. What's the matter? I'm... I'm I have that, that awful headache. Again? Well, come on, let's take care of it. No, don't bother. I'll be all right in a moment. Best time to stop it is early. Right now. You listen to Dr. Douglas here and we'll get rid of that pain in two minutes. Come on now. Lie back. All right. Now, oh, just relax. Just remember how we've done this before. Yes. I remember. That's right. Now, shut your eyes, Laura. Think of your mind as a large, empty cavern. And in the cavern, you hear my voice. Very faint, as if I'm speaking to you from far, far away. Yes. You feel at peace, relaxed, happy. Your head is clear. Your pain is gone. Yes. It's gone. Oh, you're happy now. You're happy to be here with me. With me, my darling. Aren't you? Yes. I'm happy. You love me, Laura, don't you? Not in the way you loved your father. You love me as a man. I'll say it, darling. Say, I love you. Eric. I love you. Say my name, Laura. My name. I love you. Jimmy. What is the matter with you, Prudence? I'm sorry, Professor. The dish fell from my hand. What is it? What happened? Nothing. Nothing, nothing, my dear. You're fine. You're just fine. Prudence just dropped something. I came to tell you that dinner is ready. Well, so you had a good tennis game, did you? Was it uh, mixed doubles? It was, as a matter of fact. Oh, who was your partner? Not someone named Jimmy, by any chance? Why, yes. How did you know? Oh, well, no mystery. You spoke his name while you were hypnotized. Uh, who is Jimmy? Well, his full name is Jimmy Collins. You known him long? Papa, three months. Three months? Well, you never mentioned him before. Oh, I'm sure I did. But I had enough for you to meet him, Eric. I'm sure you two would get along. What do you do for a living besides mixed doubles? He's in Wall Street. Well, well. Maybe you started choosing your friends more carefully, darling. I'm glad to see that. But, uh, just the same. Eric, I wish you would stop talking to me like a scolding father. I am not your father. I was talking to you as a friend. I'm sorry. Do you wish dessert now, Professor? Uh, no. No, Prudence, no dessert. Um, gotta stay in trim. <laughs> Who knows, I might take up tennis yet. Laura, I tell you what. Why don't you bring this Jimmy around? I'd love to meet him. No, I'm afraid I don't know much about Haiti, Professor Bernstein. I've never been to the island. Oh, but of course Laura has told you of her life there. Oh, yes, she's told me all about it. In fact, you spent some time there yourself, didn't you? Yes, a few years. That's where I met Laura and uh, her father, as a matter of fact. You can see that Eric brought back half the island. <laughs> well, I have my uh, souvenirs. Like, uh, 
This thing, for instance. What is that? Looks a little tacky to me. Well, they call it an Oanga packet. It's a charm the voodoo men use for every purpose. Some good and some bad. Ah, we should throw out that awful thing, Eric. Oh, well, it was a gift made for me by an old mamaloy in uh, Port-au-Prince. It's a protective charm, guaranteed to ward off the devil. And, of course, uh, Laura can tell you more about it. Laura's much more of an expert on voodoo than I am. You mean just because she was raised on the island? Well, it's an interesting primitive study. Otherwise, sheer nonsense, of course. Oh. Oh, uh, you shouldn't have said that. You've offended Laura dreadfully. Laura's mm -hmm. a believer, you know. She played with voodoo dolls. The way other children play with Chatty Cathy and Betsy Wixie. Harry, please <laughs> stop it. Ask her, Jimmy. Go ahead, ask her if that isn't so. Oh, I'd feel very foolish asking that question. Oh, Jimmy, of course it isn't so. Well, that's good to hear, frankly. I mean, it'd be a heck of a thing on our honeymoon, waking up and finding an Awanga bag in my slipper. Did you say honeymoon? Yes. Didn't Laura tell you? Laura and I are engaged. We're going to be married next week. Professor. What do you want? It's late, Professor. After midnight. Leave me alone, Prudence. Go to bed. There is no chain strong enough to hold her. What did you say? The girl is not of your blood. Why do you struggle to keep her? Prudence, I can't lose her. You hear me? If I lose Laura, I'd die. No, Professor. Oh, you've got to help me. If you want me to live, you've got to help me. There is nothing anyone can and do. There is. There is. There is. There is something that you can do. What is that? I've been thinking about it all night. Prudence, you can make a doll. Well, what have we here? A four-sided triangle? Professor Eric Burnside, young Laura Fletcher, Jimmy Collins, a servant named Prudence. Or is this going to turn out to be a five-sided triangle with the fifth member of the equation, a doll? We'll find out what Prudence can do to help the professor in his emotional dilemma when I return shortly with Act Two. new spirit sweeping the land. A spirit of honesty and integrity. A free spirit. A spirit that demands products which fill your utilitarian needs while satisfying your good taste and your desire for economy. We at Buick have felt the spirit and are dedicated to your sense of freedom. Our crisply designed, solidly built 1975 Buicks will bring joy even to the most demanding of free spirits. The 1975 Buick Electra. La Sabre. Riviera, Century, Skylark, Apollo, and the gutsy new Buick Skyhawk are dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. Hey, there's an exciting new attitude at Buick. Take advantage of it at your local Buick dealer. If you want to buy a new home today, your problem isn't the cost of materials. It's the cost of money. High interest rates. Hi, Frank Lieber here to suggest you do this instead. Visit a True Value Home Center. The huge array of building materials you see there will give you ideas. Ideas about what you can do yourself to renew parts or all of the home you live in now. The basement, for instance. True Value Home Centers can help you change it from workroom for washing machines to a playroom for people. Paneling to go over cold concrete block walls. In wood grains, colors, and scenic designs. Install it yourself. And hardwood parquet flooring to go over the old linoleum. Install it just like tile. You could even install a bar down there. True Value Home Centers have sinks, countertops, and plumbing fixtures too. You supply the labor, they supply the materials. And some know-how if you need it. Come see what you can do with the home you live in now at your nearby True Value Home Center. A week 
week has passed since Laura Fletcher made her earth-shaking announcement to Professor Eric Douglas. The announcement which turned the professor's world completely upside down. But for a man who has looked into the future and found it bleak and empty, Eric seems like a happy man at the moment as he listens to the sound of the Dambala ceremony and waits for Laura Fletcher to enter the room. Eric, I'm here. Laura, well, let me stop this racket. Well, don't you look lovely. Hmm. And don't you look well. Eric, I can't tell you how good it is to see you smiling. Well, I've got something to smile at, all right. Myself. I uh, don't know what came over me that night, Laura. I, I just was not myself. I couldn't let you run off and get married without my blessing. And a suitable present, of course. A present? Eric, you shouldn't have. You've always admired this ivory charm, and I, uh, I want you to have it. You and Jimmy. Oh, Eric. It's beautiful. It must be priceless. Well, it's not as priceless as our friendship. I, I wouldn't want anything to happen to that. Oh, thank you so much. Jimmy will be as thrilled with it as I am. I think we should talk before you go away, darling. I think we should talk about, uh... Your father. What about him? I have to ask you this, Laura. Whether or not you've ever told your fiancé the full story. I, I've told him quite a lot. Including the way it ended for him? Don't talk about it now, Eric. Please. No, I still blame myself. I knew that Harry wasn't right in the head. I uh, I could see the signs. And I shouldn't have let it go as far as I did. Please, Eric. You know that I, I cannot bear to remember that time. I know, I know. You were only 14, but you witnessed it all. His mad delusions. Don't. Oh, my head. Laura, what is it? It's a... The pain again? Uh, yes. Oh, Poor darling, here. Come on, lean back. It happens every time. I remember my father. Shh. Now, now, now. Don't talk. Just lean back. Relax. Close your eyes. Yes. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Now breathe deeply, darling. Deeply. Now you remember how we do this together. How we make the pain disappear. How you clear your mind of everything but the sound of my voice. Yes. You can't hear anything but me now, Laura. Just my voice echoing in your mind. You're asleep now. You're so deeply asleep that you won't waken until I tell you. You won't know anything but what you hear me say. Do you understand? Yes. I understand. That's it, my darling. Deep. 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 Prudence? Prudence? Yes, Professor. I'm here. Bring it to me. No, Professor, this is wrong. Bring me the box, Prudence. Very well. Here? Yes. Yes, Prudence, a beautiful doll. That's a beautiful likeness. <laughs> Laura? Laura? Open your eyes. Yes. What do you see, Laura? I see. I see. Nothing at all. You were asleep and you had a bad dream. Asleep? Yes. 
You had one of your headaches, do you remember? And I put you under hypnosis, and then I decided to let you sleep it off. You seem so tired. I feel so strange. I know. The truth is... Well, I'm not sure that you're well. What do you mean? When do you and Jimmy plan to get married? This weekend. I can't help wondering if that's wise. What do you... What do you mean? I wonder if you're well enough. You seem so run down and the headaches are obviously worse. It took a long, long time to make you lose the pain. Eric. Jimmy and I are getting married. This Saturday. We're driving to Crompton Lane. And we're getting married by the Justice of the Peace. Nothing is going to change that. Nothing. You sure you feel okay, Laura? Yes, I'm all right. You've hardly said a word since we started out. Well, a girl doesn't run out to get married every day of her life. I need time to reflect. I haven't changed your mind, I hope. No, I haven't changed my mind. Well, what's that cold sweat all about? It's not another one of your headaches, is it? No, it's just nerves. It's bridal jitters. Now, maybe, maybe if you didn't drive so fast. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm in a hurry. the door, young man. I'm sorry about that. Uh, my name is Collins. I called this morning about the wedding. Oh, the judge is inside. He's near deaf as a post, so better make the I do good and loud. <laughs> I intend to. Oh! <clears throat> come in. Come on. Come come, come in, folks. I'm a witness. Fine. Uh, young lady, you send... Uh, uh, here. That's the young man. Honey, are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm fine. You sure you wouldn't like a glass of water? Oh, no. Thank you. Steady, honey. It only hurts for a minute. <laughs> Dearly beloved, <clears throat> we're gathered together here in the sight of God and the face of this company, trying to get this man and this woman holy matrimony. Well, what's wrong? Which is an honorable estate instituted by God. Just a little shortness of breath. Signifying unto us, Mr. Laura. Union, as the church of Christ and his church. Oh, it's which holy estate Christ adorned. Oh, and Jimmy. What's the friend. matter? I am Mr. Matter. What? I've got this... This awful pain. This terrible pain. Raining. Oh, Jimmy. I'm so sorry. All right, now, come on. Don't be sorry. Just take it easy, that's all. That's what the doctor said. I do feel better now. Much better. Oh, who would have thought the day would turn out like this? Stuck in a cheap motel across the street from the Justice of the Peace. We're not even married yet. It would be deliciously sinful if it weren't for this miserable room. Jimmy. What is it? Oh, God. Jimmy, help me. What's the matter, honey? Is it the pain again? No. No, it's something else. Jimmy, I, I have to get up. Oh, come on, I stay have in to get up. Darling, you heard the... I have to. I have to move. Laura! Jimmy! Oh, Jimmy! Lord, you hit the wall. I can't stop myself. Oh, Laura, oh. stop! I can't tell you how sorry I am, Jimmy, but I uh, also can't say that I'm surprised. Well, what do you mean? Well, my field is anthropology, but I'm not a complete stranger to the psychological sciences. In my opinion, uh, Laura's problem is the result of a conflict, the difference between two worlds, the world of everyday reality 
and the dark world of superstition. No matter how much she laughs about it now, Laura grew up believing in devils and zombies and voodoo dolls. Come on, I just can't believe that. Well, that's why I feel so strongly that Laura, well, she just isn't ready for marriage. Now, here, let me show you something. What is that? The doll. Now, as you can see, it's a uh, very good likeness of Laura. Uh, Prudence is an artist of sorts. Your servant made this? Yes. It's her hobby. It's a sort of sculpture. But um, what do you suppose Laura did when she saw this doll? She screamed. She was horrified. She thought it was a voodoo effigy. And whatever happened to the doll would happen to her. No, Professor, I'm, I'm sorry. I just can't buy that explanation. Yes, I was afraid that you would Laura's too sensible. This is all such childish stuff. Would you care to test the theory? Test it? Huh. Yeah. Well, would you be willing to conduct a little experiment? It might. Depends on what it is. All right, I'll tell you. At exactly nine o'clock this evening, I will take our little doll here and bring it to that fireplace. And I'll hold the doll over the flames, high enough so that it won't be scorched, but low enough so that it can feel the heat. Oh, the dolls don't feel... No, no. Dolls don't. But Laura is another matter. You tell her what I'm doing. Tell her about the experiment. And then see how she reacts. I'm sorry, I don't like politics, Professor. I just want you to know what you're up against, Jimmy. Now remember, exactly nine o'clock. Sometimes, Jimmy, I mean, I know you saw Eric. You told me you were going to. All right, I saw him. And? He just told me a lot of nonsense, that's all. About me? And my father? About you and voodoo dolls. What did he say exactly? Laura, why did he have that doll made? What doll? You know, the one that looks like you. What are you... What are you talking about? You said you saw it, didn't you? No. I never saw any such thing, Jimmy. He must have been joking. He must have been putting you on. I saw the thing, darling. You what? I saw the doll. It was about this big and obviously hand-carved and... Well, it did look like you, Laura. Same long blonde hair, blue eyes, very much like you. That woman knows how to carve. Woman? You mean Prudence, the servant? Yes, that's what he said. That she made the doll and that you actually think... Laura, you can't believe in voodoo. Not really. Oh, dear God. Then that explains it. That explains everything. What? The pain in my chest. It was like a... Like the thrust of a needle. Oh, now, come on. And the way I lost control as if I did... Like I was being flung about like a, like a doll. It was exactly like a helpless doll. Cut that out. You know that isn't so. You're just convincing yourself of this nonsense. It's all in your mind. But what else explains it to me? What else? As long as he has that doll, he has me. Shh. Honey, please. That's crazy. You've got to find it, Jimmy. You've got to get that doll away from me. Okay, okay, honey. Just give us a little time. I don't have any time. If something happens to that doll... I'll die. No, Laura, you can't really believe that. I want you to prove that isn't true, and you can tonight. What do you mean? That nutty friend of yours said he was going to try a little experiment tonight just to prove the point to me. Well, I want you to disprove it. What sort of experiment? He said that exactly nine o'clock he was going to take the doll and bring it to the fireplace. Oh, no. He said he was going to hold it over the flames high enough for the doll to feel the heat, and he said you'd feel it, too. Jimmy. What time is it? It's uh, 20 of 9. We'll get out of here. No. no. Well, go back to my place and we will prove no. him wrong, darling. Prove him a liar. Oh, God. I, I, I'm getting warm. I'm getting terribly warm, Jimmy. That's your imagination. No, but it... Oh, honey, he said 9 o'clock. Wait a minute. The watch isn't going. Jimmy, look. That clock on the wall, it is not... Oh, for 
Pete's sake. Oh, Jimmy, it's happening. It's really happening. Laura, don't. Come on, you've got to fight this. It's the only suggestion. It's hypnosis. He's killing me. He's sending me alive. Honey, no, darling, no. The mind is a powerful weapon. And when it's turned against ourselves, it's the most dangerous weapon on earth. Can Laura Fletcher find a way to stop her own mind from tormenting her and possibly ending her life? At least she isn't alone in the struggle. We'll find out what Laura and Jimmy can do about the deadly doll that menaces her when I return shortly with Act Three. I want that. Sinus medicine. Headache tablets? No, sinus medicine. Sinus tablets. Helps the headache and the pressure. Oh, you mean sign off. Exactly. Headache pain is one thing. A sinus headache is something else. Sometimes your whole face can seem to throb with pain. You want relief. Take sign off tablets. S I N E O F F. The sinus medicine that gives you a full dose of pure aspirin plus a sinus drainer. Sign off. The sinus medicine that helps relieve sinus pain while you drain. And Sinoff doesn't stop there. Have you tried Sinoff Sinus Spray, the fastest known form of sinus congestion relief? It works in seconds. That's Sinoff Sinus Spray. When sinus flares up, use Sinoff tablets and spray only as directed. S-I-N-E-O-F-F. Sinoff. Exactly. Sinoff, the sinus medicines in the bright red box. This is Arnold Probe with a wrap-up on the National Summit Conference on Inflation and Menswear. The bondsman again stunned the meeting by announcing to representatives that he... Oh, uh, th there's the bondsman now. Uh, sir, sir. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I have to rush off to a celebration. A celebration? Yes, right at this moment, Bonds is celebrating its 65th anniversary. And when Bonds has an anniversary, we like our customers to celebrate with us. Our anniversary prices are real inflation beaters. You mean they're lower than Bonds' regular prices? That's right. Three-piece vested suits, reduced from $120 to $99. Incredible. Special groups of $130 vested suits, now $109. Unbelievable. Fashionable Western-style outerwear, priced from $24.99. Fantastic. With similar savings in shoes, ladies, and tall and big men's departments. Golly, Bond's 65th anniversary sale leaves me speechless. Then hum with me. Oh, uh, all right. You get more than savings from Bond. That's very nice. Professor Douglas's experiment has succeeded only too well. And it's also succeeded in convincing Jimmy Collins that something has to be done to save the sanity and even the life of the woman he loves. And that the best place to be in would be the home of Eric Douglas, his servant Prudence, and the doll itself. Oh. Hello, Miss Fletcher. Hello, Prudence. Is Professor Douglas home? No, Miss. He's gone. Gone where? On a lecture tour. He took the early morning train not half an hour ago. When do you expect him back? Not for days, he said. Prudence, I have to talk to you. Please let us in. Yes, Miss. Prudence, when my fiancé was here the other day, the professor showed him a doll. A doll, miss? He said you made it. I made no doll, miss. I saw it, Prudence. It was in a black cardboard box about this big. They took it out of this break front here. I know nothing of a doll, sir. All right. Suppose we look for ourselves. Please, sir. Jimmy, is it there? Oh, it's empty. Please. I cannot allow this. All right, where's the doll, Prudence? I don't know. Please, you have to help me, Prudence. You don't know what he's doing with that doll. He's making voodoo magic with it. Do you understand? I am a Christian, Miss Fletcher. You know what I'm talking about. He's putting a spell on me, Prudence. He's using that doll you made to make me do his bidding. He wants to stop me from marrying. He thinks only of your happiness, Miss. You are like... His daughter. He is torturing me. Would a father torture his own child? 
You've got to help us find him, Prudence. You must know where he's staying. I'm sorry. I know nothing. All right. Then the least you can do is give him a message. You tell him for me, for both of us, that his game isn't going to work. That Laura and I are leaving too, and we're not coming back. He'll never see her again. Did you get that? No matter what he does, he'll never see her again. Did you get that? No matter what he does, he will never see Laura again. <laughs> Prudence? Prudence? Where are you? Here, Professor. Did you have a good tour? Yes. No. I, I don't remember. It was endless. Seems like far more than three days. They were here, Professor. Who? Miss Fletcher and her young man. They came to see you and to find the doll. You didn't let them? No. It is still hidden. Good. The girl says you are torturing her. Only for her own good, Prudence. I swear that. This man Collins is wrong for her, and I had to prevent the marriage. Why, Professor? Because her father asked me to watch over her to protect her. That's why I asked you to make the doll, so that I could trick her into believing that I had some control over her. Nothing else would have worked. It was not a trick. Of course it was, Prudence. No, Professor. The doll was made because... Dumbala commands with her image, her hair, a drop of her blood. Now the girl and the doll have become sharers of the same soul. Prudence, you are slipping back into the jungle. The doll has no powers. Laura reacted only to suggestion. The doll is her. She is the doll. Only the sorcerer can break the spell. I'm tired, Prudence. I can't cope with mumbo-jumbo tonight. Professor, lift the spell from the doll. Oh, for heaven's sake. There is no such thing, Prudence. Call the girl. Tell her I will ask Dambala Uida to unchain her spirit from the doll. No. I will not do anything of the kind. Why? Because you don't want her to marry? That's right. Because you want her for yourself. What kind of talk is that? I'm more than twice her age. But you still want her. I have eyes. I have ears. I will call the girl. I will tell her that the doll is here. And that you will lift the spell from it. Stop that. Put that phone down. Now you stay out of this, you hear me? I made the doll for you. Now I will unmake its evil. I told you to put that phone down. <laughs> Here, now stop him. You're scratching my face. Look what you've done, you witch. You've drawn blood. I'm sorry. It didn't mean... You have meddled enough in my life. Now get out of here. I don't want to see your ugly face again. I want you out of here by tomorrow morning. Do you hear me? Yes, brother. I have you. <laughs> A moment. Laura. Hello, Mary. You know Jimmy Collins, of course. What are you doing here? Sorry to be such early arrivals, Professor. We wanted to make sure you didn't go off to another uh, lecture this morning. I have nothing to say to you, Mr. Collins. Don't plan to stay long, Professor. Only until you give us that doll. The doll? That's right. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake, you're, you're really serious, aren't you? You really believe that doll has some mysterious powers. It doesn't matter, Eric. I'd just feel better if, you, if you'd let me have it. I know it's here. How do you know that? Who told you? Prudence called me. Prudence? Yes, very late last night. She told us that the, the doll is in the hall closet. In a black box. She lied to you. Woman's gone crazy. I had to fire her. You want me to look in the closet, Professor? How dare you? I could have you arrested for what you're doing. Eric, please. We've been friends. Friends for such a long friends. time. 
That is a beautiful word, isn't it? Friends, almost as good a word as father. That is all I ever meant to you. Oh, uh... Let's have the doll, Professor. Oh, yes, the doll, the voodoo doll. Mr. Collins, I think that you are as mad as she is. Maybe I am mad, Eric. But I am afraid of the doll. I can't help myself. So please, please let me have it. I'll give you one minute to lead us to the doll, Professor. Oh, and then what will you do? Pump me full of lead? And I'll find it myself. In the course of it, I might break quite a few things. Quite a few things in the process. Things you may value. All right, I will show you the doll. There. Is that what you're after? <gasps> that's what that I think I... I think I remember seeing it once before. But it's as if it was in a dream. I'll take that, Professor. Stop right there. What? Now, suppose I didn't give you the doll. Suppose I smashed its head instead. Eric. All I have to do is smash the head against this wall. One sharp blow, and the oh. head is broken. The skull oh. caved in. The pretty blue eyes shut forever. Ah, huh? shall I, Laura? Eric, why are you doing this to me? You smashed my life, didn't you? You didn't care what happened to me? Oh, but I do care. You walked out with him. You left me for him. Well, here's what he... Uh, then... Uh, have a you who, Laura? Huh? Eric, what's the matter? Uh, what's the matter with him? Uh, my chest. Uh, my chest. Uh, it's a heart attack. I think he's dead. Oh, oh my God! Are you sure? Look at his face. Oh no. There's no sign of a pulse. He's gone, Laura. Oh, no. Just like that. Must have been the excitement. No, it was not. Perdot, the spell is lifted, miss. When the sorcerer dies, the spell dies with him. What's that in her hand? Perdot, what are you doing with that knife? It was the only way, miss. Wait a minute. She's got something else, some some kind of doll. Perdot, you, you didn't. His skin and his blood from my fingernails. His curse from my lips and heart. Oh, Jimmy. How oh, horrible. She killed him. Oh, no, no, Laura, no. It was a coronary. Only a coronary. I think. Well, personally, I don't think I'll ever trust a doll again. Not Raggedy Ann, or Betsy Wetsy, or even that paper doll they used to sing about. Of course, there's no question in my mind that Professor Douglas died of natural causes as opposed to supernatural. There's a great deal to be said for the power of suggestion, which, of course, is why you're about to hear the following suggestion. make the sun start shining again through the United Nations Children's Fund. This is Bill Anderson, asking you to be generous when the neighborhood youngsters come to your door to trick-or-treat for UNICEF this Halloween. Please drop a few coins in their little orange boxes and help UNICEF bring better food, medical care, and education to millions of needy children. that the story you just heard hasn't given you any ideas. That you're not all rushing out to the local toy store to buy up their supply of dolls in order to try some grisly experiments on your least loved ones. 
Take our word for it. It doesn't really work. But on the other hand, why do I have this sticking pain in my left shoulder? Our cast included Joanne Linville, Ross Martin, Virginia Gregg, and Carl Swenson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. Well, I don't know if it was the gin or a strange kind of sickness, but they found him one morning hanging upsides down from his veranda rail, crazy as a loon, carrying on about someone watering his cobra. He died in a convulsion. Oh, was it thought to be the island? Oh, no proof. But the next man, Vigors, shot himself, blew his head right off. And the first of the line of the Benton Far East Company, old Adams, he just plain up and disappeared as though that damn tropical forest reached out like a, a octopus and swallowed him. Oop, line and sink <laughs> No, sir. No, sir, Mr. Witcher, traitor or not, promotion with your company or whatever. <laughs> You wouldn't get Captain Ben Randall here to set one foot on the beach at Palace Har. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. It's our anniversary. And if I happen...